You guys, I am so excited. I am about to get on a plane to go and meet the winners of last year's Solve for Tomorrow competition. If you don't know what Solve for Tomorrow is, then go and watch my previous video on what it is and how it works here. And now, let me take you on a magical journey to Owensville, Missouri, where I am going to meet with... Actually, I'll go ahead and let them introduce themselves. My name is Jonah. You may see me around here breaking things. It's kind of what I like to do. My name's TC. You may see me uh, fixing stuff that he breaks. So you guys, okay. <laughs> you guys do well together. <laughs> I guess you could say that. Oh, yes. I'm Paige Taylor. I've always been interested in science, so science is kind of my life. I love it, me too. In 2019, these remarkable three students from Owensville High won the Solve for Tomorrow Grand Prize, and they're going to tell me what their national winning project was. It was a lock for school classrooms or any sort of uh, big public building. So it could be put in hospitals or, you know, anything like that where are, they're kind of a target of attack. So we came up with this idea where you take a bracket, like it's a little bracket, it's about yay big, mm -hmm. and you bolt it to the door frame. And then you have another one that bolts to the door. You just have this little piece of aluminum, and that's like one of the strongest structures you can make. So then when you slide that piece in between the two brackets, it makes it super strong, so if you tried to pull the door open, nothing would happen. That's amazing. And where did that idea come from? That? We were just kind of looking at issues that were in the world and the community today, and we saw that as a growing issue, and we decided this would be something that we could tackle and actually do something about. Everybody says it needs to be changed and something needs to be done about it, but Nobody has really done anything. It was a long few months, but at each stage of the competition, the Owensville team advanced to the next level of Solve for Tomorrow. They enlisted the help of a local engineering facility for advice on how to fabricate their door lock and ended up with a device made out of aerospace grade material. And their efforts paid off. Owensville High School. When they were announced as the national champions of Solve for Tomorrow. I mean, I've grown up in Owensville all my life, so it's just been small town girl. I feel like all of that broke me out of my shell, and I came out with better public speaking skills and things like that. I've definitely gotten more courage to take initiative on things. One of the biggest things we actually had to learn wasn't even like, isn't even in the title of STEM. It's like the communication. I feel like I've gained a lot of experience that obviously would have never had. We're actually pursuing our, our lock right now, like we're furthering it. We could possibly turn it into something huge and actually get it into schools all around the country. Out of the STEM classes that we have here, there's 50% girls and before then it was less than 50% and I was just kind of like, wow, that's kind of incredible to me because it's always been more of a boys class, you know, and it kind of made my heart happy to hear that because yeah, I was like, I'm really out here kind of setting the example for them. And they, I think they saw that and got courage and like, oh, this is not just a boys class or a boys yes. thing. Yes. The national finalists of Solve for Tomorrow each get $100,000 of funding to outfit their classrooms with Samsung technology. Owensville now has access to flipboards, Chromebooks, 3D printers, and drones all of which are taking their STEM education program to the next level. Not just for the team of winners, but for all of the students in their school. And one of those students is Juliana Bayless, who had an idea of how Owensville High can share their new resources with the rest of their community. We are one of the only schools around here that actually has a STEM program that is functioning like we are. We have so many kids. This is something really amazing. This is something that everybody should be experiencing. The goal is we can show other schools what STEM is and get those kids into STEM. What are we in right now and what is uh, it gonna be? This is the 2006 International School Bus. She's a beauty. Oh yeah, she's old, let me tell you that. The Owensville champs revamped an old school bus, removing some of the seats and decking it out with all of their new tech. Why? so they could take it around to other smaller schools in their area so even more kids can have access to these amazing STEM resources. So this is like a mobile STEM lab? Yep, basically. Yeah, exactly. That is so cool that you can like take to different schools in the area and share your resources with. Yep. Yes. That's amazing. I think you guys are so cool because you get all of this amazing stuff for your obviously hard work and then you're like, we should share it. But of course, the students didn't achieve all of this on their own. You're the whole reason why we're here. 
because you pushed us every day. They were mentored the whole way by their STEM teacher, Kevin Lay. What I think an amazing and incredible part of what Solve for Tomorrow competition does is it allows a, it allows a teacher to find out a why behind it, behind a student. You see their strengths not only light up inside of themselves, but they start using their strengths to accentuate others. Mm -hmm. Ultimate collaboration. Teamwork, ultimate teamwork. All of those soft skills that we talk about all the time, right? Communication and eye contact and a good handshake, those aren't so soft anymore. Yeah. Like, those are what people are seeking out. It wasn't just about a door lock mechanism. It was about how to, you know, not just how to make it, but how to thrive in a world like that. Mm -hmm. The students have really kind of transformed a lot of the stuff that they do in class. I would love to be able to stand here and tell you that I take credit for it. I can't. Like, I'm not gonna take credit that's for the beautiful thing what they is, do. Like, we put the tools that are transforming the classrooms in the hands of the kids to totally see how agree. they're gonna use it. And, and once again, it's one of those things where you kind of step off to the side and get out of their way and just watch them use it. Solve for Tomorrow transformed Owensville High and everything it's been able to offer its students. And the students themselves have, of course, been shaped by this experience, too. Well, I'm gonna do biomedical engineering. <gasps> Basically, you just fix stuff all day. Sweet, dude, That's I love basically that. Basically, all I want to do. Fixing stuff. <laughs> yeah, basically. I would definitely want to pursue something in the STEM field, whether it's being an engineer or whether it's doing like the business stuff because that's also a part of STEM. Yeah. I don't really know where it's going to take me, but it's definitely going to take me somewhere. I want to work at NASA. Uh, I want to be an astrophysicist. The stars, like it's just the stars and the galaxies, like seeing it, it just. It makes me feel incredible knowing that that is something out there and that the things that make that up make me up too. Like, in a way, I am that and nobody knows that much about them and it'd be so cool to study them. I am a freshman at Lindenwood University in St. Charles, St. Louis area, so the big city, but at least the biggest city in Missouri. But <laughs> I'm studying biological sciences because science is kind of my thing. Samsung Software Tomorrow has changed the way that I see empowerment, the way that I know students can be empowered. And because of that, it's changed my approach to education. Hey guys, I'm back at home now, but I just had to really quick pop into this video to say how incredibly inspired I was by the Owensville kids and their original idea and their work ethic and what they did with their resources after they won, sharing it not only just with their school, but with their entire community. And I'm so excited to see where these kids go in the future. Now, obviously because of the ongoing COVID-19 situation, this year's final pitch event looks pretty different from last year's when Owensville won, but the Owensville High kids still had an awesome gift for those participating in this year's competition. Good luck.